All right, friends, I said I wanted to go over this nitrogen cycle one more time to make sure that we are all on the same page and everybody gets it. So if you didn't get it this summer, let's try and get it now. So the nitrogen cycle, remember, just like your body needs carbon to make all these organic molecules that your body is made of, that all living things are made of, you also need nitrogen to make those organic molecules as well. <clears throat> it's not the foundational molecule, but it's really super important. Uh, you can't have proteins without nitrogen. You can't have DNA without nitrogen. So, a tremendous storehouse of nitrogen all around us is in our atmosphere. Uh, it is, our atmosphere I believe is around 70%, maybe a little more, nitrogen gas. Now, the nitrogen that you are literally swimming in in this atmosphere all around 70 percent you know when we think of air we think of the oxygen but that's a really small fraction nitrogen gas is hugely important part of all this air that, that, that's making up our atmosphere and you are breathing it in all the time but your body cannot use it in that form so how do you get it well much like the carbon in the carbon cycle you have to eat it Okay, but here's the deal. In the carbon cycle, the plants could take in the carbon by way of photosynthesis. Plants can't use this nitrogen gas either. They can't use it either. It is totally broken to them. It is not usable. We take it in, we exhale it back out unchanged because N2 nitrogen gas is an inert substance. It's not very reactive. So, how in the world, if plants need it and we need it, but neither of us can get it from taking it in from the atmosphere, how on earth are we going to get it into the molecules in our bodies where we need it? Fortunately for us, there are organisms that can use this stubbornly inert nitrogen gas from the atmosphere, and they are called nitrogen-fixing bacteria and they are absolutely critical because without them we'd have this enormous storehouse of nitrogen gas that could not be accessed these are the critters that turn this nitrogen gas into something that is usable by living things all right so if we look at our our uh, little diagram here we are going to start this is going to be number one nitrogen gas in the atmosphere um, and now we're going to follow our magic arrow down here to number two, the process of nitrogen fixation. That's a process where nitrogen gas, which is inert and does not want to react, is converted, is fixed into a form that is usable by living things. Now, who does this? Once again, it is the nitrogen fixing bacteria. They can exist in two different places. They can exist just in the soil. So here's some nitrogen fixing bacteria that are down here represented by these little dots here in the soil. So I'm going to put that at number three. But there is also nitrogen fixing bacteria that can exist in a symbiotic. Remember, a symbiotic relationship is a relationship in which two organisms are closely associated. In this case, both are benefiting, so we're going to call it a, mu uh, a mutualistic symbiotic relationship because the bacteria live in little nodes in the roots of some plant. So here's the plant root and these little, little bacterial houses in the root where the bacteria, these nitrogen fixing bacteria live. Um, these particular plants that do this are called legumes. They're mostly in the bean family. So either way, and I'm going to, uh, so yeah, okay. So in the atmosphere, nitrogen fixation occurs either here by nitrogen fixing bacteria in the soil or by nitrogen fixing bacteria that live in the roots of plants. Either way, this nitrogen fixing bacteria will produce something called 
NH3. So they take the N2 and they turn it into NH3, which is simply the chemical way of saying ammonia. Ammonia now can be used by this plant. So the plant takes the ammonia made by the nitrogen fixing bacteria and the plant converts that ammonia, which to us is nasty stuff. It's toxic. If you've ever smelled ammonia, it's not good. So it's toxic, but plants can use it and they can convert that ammonia nit based nitrogen into nitrogen that is going to be used in DNA and proteins and all those important organic compounds that make up a living thing. Now, once they have, the plants have converted it to their own DNA, their own proteins, their own plant tissues, and we'll call that step four, then animals now have access to this nitrogen that is tied up in the plant's DNA and proteins, so we eat it. We convert it to our own DNA and our own proteins, but eventually, as you know, plants and animals die. So if the plant dies, if the animal dies, or leaves waste behind, either way, decomposers are going to, and remember we are talking bacteria, and fungus, and of course there are other decomposers too, but these are really important ones that I want you to remember. They're going to decompose, so this will be number seven, and change, alter the DNA and proteins and all those other kinds of organic compounds that are in the dead plant, in the dead animal, and they're going to change them back into ammonia. This is called ammonification, okay? So the the nice DNA, big complex DNA and proteins back into ammonia. Now, we're basically where we were right here at this point. So, the ammonia can be taken up by the plants, okay? So we will call that number eight. Um, honestly, I don't know why. We'll just say that ammonia is going to be taken up by the plant, okay? Now, or there are other kinds of bacteria. More bacteria, Coleman? Yes, more bacteria. No more bacteria. We're going to have more bacteria. There are some bacteria that can take up this ammonia, and so now I'm going to go to number nine here. Ammonia may take up, I'm sorry, nitrifying bacteria may take up the ammonia and convert it to one of two things. Nitrates, which is NO3, or nitrites, NO2. Nitrates, 8 is NO3, it is NO2. Now, if they convert it, if these nitrifying bacteria convert the nitrogen and the ammonia here that is right there, if they take that and convert it to NO3, it's basically usable to plants in the same way that ammonia is, okay? I guess that was where my arrow was actually going, was from there. Okay, I'm going to scratch that and put a 10, because I'm pretty sure this was supposed to go there to show that NO3 can be taken up much like ammonia can. It's sad when you can't read your own diagram. I apologize. <sighs> okay, NO2. NO2, however, is useless. Nitrites are useless to plants. So, if these bacteria turn it into NO2, there is yet another bacteria, yes, more bacteria, that are going to convert this NO2 back into N2, so nitrites go back to nitrogen gas, and guess, and I'm going to put an 11 here, guess where that goes? Right back into the atmosphere. So again, we have a cycle. We're at bio, where it's in all these living things, so this is the bio part down here, and this is the geo part up here, of the biogeochemical cycle. Okay, so that's the nitrogen cycle. See if you can make heads or tails out of this. We are going to talk about it in class, so jot down any questions you've got and bring them to class with you. All right, thanks for watching. I don't know how long that was, but I hope it wasn't too long. Thanks a lot. See you next time.